Oh, thank you. I'm speechless now. I need to recover <laughs> some time, I guess. Uh, thank you, Deeds, for this introductory, which I think I not entirely agree uh, and deserve. But yeah, my talk uh, goes back to history again. Today is, is such a day that we, we all talk about the history. But I also do some comparisons with uh, nowadays and uh, at the end of the talk, uh, coming back today in modern times. So it concerns polar exploration and then and now, like it is entitled here. And uh, by then I mean uh, the historical time, uh, which was the the uh, time of uh, time of uh, the age of discovery, which finally ended with a heroic age of polar exploration. It is perhaps uh, better known as a heroic age of uh, Antarctic exploration, but actually it involved both poles and uh, imitated initially from uh, from the first IPU at the end uh, in the end of the. 19th century and and uh, which actually started from uh, from the north and then moved down to the south so this heroic age of polar exploration was the last chapter written in the age of the discovery and uh, it pretty much ended between the two world wars uh, why it was called heroic is, is partly because uh, at these times these men uh, uh, discovering these uh, harsh environments like polar regions are, they were a little bit uh, ahead of their time in a technological mean. I mean the technology, technology wasn't uh, improved as, uh, as much it was needed in, uh, in these uh, difficult environments and, and uh, that meant that uh, quite usually they need to suffer a lot. There, was, there were uh, quite a many casualties, but also of course there was uh, quite a lot of success as well. So they, they were uh, kind of heroes at this time. Uh, first of all, what defines the exploration at all? Here's the two definitions, one picked up from Wikipedia. Exploration, which is the act of searching for some purpose of discovery of information or resources. And, and two key words are here, information and resources. I will, I will come back uh, to this later. And uh, these are actually the things which have been transformed in time or, or changed their places. The Cam Cambridge Dictionary uh, offers the the explanation as it is activity of searching and finding out about something which is pretty much similar. So the leading force of the exploration was actually the curiosity. And man is a quite a curious uh, creature, like a polar bear. And the excitement to prove something unknown or opposite to the, what was already known. So these were the driving forces of the exploration why these uh, men went out to, to discover the new world. And uh, this shift of paradigm, like I mentioned, or the line between the modern and historical era is somewhere between two world wars. Uh, that was the time when major technological advances and, and uh, fundamental shifts also in science started a uh, new mechanical era. There came engines, uh, motorized vehicles, uh, radio connection, later on satellite connection. So that marked modern time of exploration because exploration never stopped really. It, it still went, uh, went on, but a uh, but little bit uh, transformed. Uh, at these times, polar regions started to lose some of their remote, uh, remoteness and became more accessible and uh, Exploration itself, the, the meaning of this word uh, uh, continued, but the approach in modern era was, was different then because the geographical importance, what was the, the main feature of the exploration before, was now more or less gone. 
the, and most of the territories, except perhaps the, the, um, some not of the highest places and deepest places on Earth, were discovered and mapped in general. And, and scientific approach to gather more information, more detailed information became more important. So the main reason was advancement in technology and science. What exploration involved in past and what it involves today then? Uh, there are different interests which, uh, which drove the polar expeditions. Uh, some of them are uh, still found uh, today. Uh, some of them are more left to the past. For instance, economic interests like trading routes, resources, biological or mineral resources, they, they had a strong interest in past and they still exist today. Nowadays, although we, we don't really, yeah, we use the word exploration also when we explore, for instance, carbohydrates or, or other mineral resources, but it's, it's not uh, the pure uh, meaning of the exploration actually. Then was there a scientific interest like um, geography, mapping, climate, geology, all the disciplines, what science could offer and what you could uh, use to, to study these territories. And this, uh, this became, in modern era, this became uh, the main interest of the exploration now. And then glory and national prestige was, was uh, very important in past, like heroism, race to be the first, touch the, touch the, uh, touch the ground, see the la new lands, also some political interests, territorial claims, colonialism. And this is mostly left in past. Uh, there are some, let's say, competitions still nowadays, but mostly exploration is done uh, rather through the international collaboration, the Antarctic uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and all these stations there, and Antarctic Treaty is a very good example of that. So what it was and what it is now, when er early exploration was a mixture of science and adventure, because the conditions were harsh, the technology wasn't at, uh, at this level, what, uh, what could make the exploration uh, comfort and cozy. But technological advancements finally made them uh, to take the different path, like science separated from adventure. Uh, and nowadays uh, science is considered as a major part of the exploration. And adventure went its, its own way, so it still involves some of the, some of the characteristics of exploration but it really depends on the adventure, what will be, what will be taken. Uh, science is, is more kind of rational approach, whereas adventure is, has a good dose of romanticism included. Also, science can be sometimes quite a romantic, but, but mostly it is, it's quite, quite a rational approach. Uh, there, there is... Uh, there was no need to suffer anymore. That was a big difference from past. Nowadays, it's quite uh, comfortable for scientists to go out wherever uh, they find the interesting field. And, and uh, science became chasing the new and original <coughs> knowledges. That was the difference when, when uh, earlier it was more like uh, territories observing, gathering samples then now it was a more thoughtful uh, uh, study, uh, going more into details and, and gathering the information of knowledge. Adventure whereas, uh, was jumping, is, is more like a jumping into unknown now, and, and actually adventurers uh, today deliberately choosing discomfort, and, and one of the reasons is to, to replicate the early, early explorers or pioneers to, to uh, test themselves and, uh, and also put, uh, put themselves into, into these conditions and to taste what they might have tasted at these times. A scientific approach of exploration, as I said, it was rise to knowledge, the main purpose, 
And uh, in a scientific research, in empirical research, exploration is one of these three purposes, actually. There is a description and explanation to others. So it became now revisiting of these areas, which once were already mapped and discovered, but uh, now uh, science went uh, more into details and started to study them. And so that actually the, the results were not uh, coming anymore in a straightforward like they were earlier days. Um, discoveries um, nowadays are coming more uh, via the uh, um, comprehensive analysis and, and then publishing uh, scientific uh, papers. And today's explorers are different in character. They are compared to the, to the processors, they are more now having more academic background. They, they have defined skills, instruments, and, and science today allow them to explore new knowledges. And this specific approach actually needs nowadays more brains and muscles. So muscles in science are not, not needed so much as it was in the exploration time uh, in past. Modern science uh, as exploration has moved into <coughs> cozy stations and laboratories. So uh, either they are icebreakers, moving laboratories, quite comfort, or, or Antarctic stations or other permanent stations in Arctic. Nowadays, uh, technology uh, allows to, to live there perhaps even better than at home. And, uh, and what, is, um, what is the problem there is, there is <laughs> uh, you won't anymore lose your weight, but you gain it. There. I have experienced that myself on this um, left image. There is a Chinese icebreaker down. I spent three months on this icebreaker uh, in the Arctic Ocean. And when I returned from this so-called station or laboratory, I was looking like a small walrus. So it was quite awful. Uh, we know that uh, shortage of food was quite a main problem in history for polar exploration and the explorers. So nowadays it's, it's entirely gone and you, you feel yourself more, more gaining weight. So what can be found? The modern discoverers, uh, there are quite often heard rumors that uh, much, much not, uh, there's much not left in, in, the, in the world to discover. In polar regions, I still think there are quite a many interesting things which are running, and who knows how, how much we still can discover there. There's quite a lot of these uncharted and, and unknown territories. Uh, one of the things, ice cores, from Antarctic and from Greenland have uh, given us uh, very good climatic archives to, to get the peak back to the, to the climate history. So we know about the climate change for much longer period than our own observations actually can go back. Subglacial lakes and life forms, quite in the beginning this study, we have just drilled through the through the thick, uh, thick layers of ice to reach there, and, and careful studies are still all ahead. Then ecosystems which are hidden in, uh, beneath the sea ice and also the self ice actually, uh, being there for hundreds of thousand years in, in, in darkness. Uh, then clouds still uh, Arise a lot of question in uh, in polar regions. I have uh, I have worked with them as as I was as I have been a meteorologist. I have worked with the clouds also, so I know that there's quite much unknown about them still, and observations needed to to clarify many things. So life in the water of sub-zero temperatures still surprises us. What kind of adaptations you could find there? And there are still places which man cannot reach or, or where the, where the reach is, uh, is uh, rather difficult. 
We know that water covers about 71% of the, our planet, and yet we know so little about our oceans. And that includes polar seas, or particularly polar seas, actually. Some of the interesting exploration projects going on currently, it's a huge international collaborative project called Mosaic. It includes around 600 people and 17 countries. It's about running, started the running now. They start, it's gonna be the first season now in autumn starts. Uh, that's the International Arctic Drift Expedition, probably the biggest, biggest ever made. So they're gonna, they're gonna freeze the ship into the ice and drift with a, with a pack ice over the Arctic Ocean. Another one beyond Epica called old, uh, Searching uh, the Oldest Ice, it's EU Antarctic Ice Drilling Project in search of the 1.5 million years old ice core which promises us quite a unique insight about the past climate and carbon fluxes. So there was uh, uh, about 1.2 million years ago, there uh, was, uh, was a shift in, in, uh, in the climate cycles, uh, which are caused by the natural, uh, natural changes of the, of the orbital uh, orbit of the Earth and, and orbital movements. Then, uh, we know that there was a change, there were changes in temperature, but we don't know whether whether there was some changes in carbon fluxes, uh, like uh, how how much was changed the concentration of CO2. So that insight uh, could give us a very good, very good data and uh, and uh, understanding of what happened then. Uh, knowing also, thanks for that, better what comes in future, perhaps. Then International Thwaites Glacier Collaboration Project, which investigates one of the most unstable glaciers in Antarctica. And we know that in late years, Antarctic glaciers have been increasingly, uh, increasingly uh, changed to uh, changed uh, more unstable. And, and this, this particular one, Thwaites, is roughly the size of Britain, so quite a huge one. So no one really knows how many discoverers actually there are still waiting us out. Uh, now I come to the, to the second part of this exploration, which was, uh, which described uh, the historical era, like the adventure, which has been split nowadays and, and have uh, found its own way. So it's, all about unusual, exciting, and possibly dangerous activity. And um, uh, for adventure, to experience adventure, you, you need to leave the comfort zone. That's the one of the, one of the conditions you need to fulfill to experience the adventure. And forms what, uh, and how they have evolved in time is, uh, is uh, there are different adventures carried out nowadays, and, and um, one is to replicate the history, so that's the more or less called in the footsteps of early pioneers, recreate historical feeling and taste this history or, or the life that uh, pioneers could have uh, experienced. Then there's uh, adventures which appreciate just the value uh, of going, being in the flow itself, enjoying the process, and there are several adventures or many adventures who actually are hunt for specific records. So this is quite similar and actually is a kind of heritage from earlier explorers who also uh, wanted to be the first. And these approaches have been, uh, have been uh, passed into the modern times only that now, uh, nowadays, uh, explorers or adventurers deliberately find the, find the new and hard ways to do it, uh, to, to just uh, crash the previous record or whatever, go farthest, go fastest, uh, first woman, oldest one, youngest one, whatever you could figure out. So these are certain achievements themselves. And the attitude, as I mentioned, it comes from earlier pioneers. And uh, there are different hardships which, which you could experience, ex 
experience and, and uh, prove something that is possible and what, it, what was thought could be impossible. So this is the, this is the way to, to search the ground and, and find the new possibilities. It all, it all makes it, um, it all makes it as a as a truly truly sport or athletic thing. Actually, pushing limits is a is a typical thing what athletes are doing, and and this is also part of the exploration because you find out how far how far one can go, which means that you are actually touching the unknown ground already. Uh, but it gets harder and harder to secure funding. You need to be original and there are less and less things to, to do and, uh, and, and uh, less chances to be original. So the task gets harder every time. Uh, the role of the adventures today, it definitely uh, helps the science to get closer to the public. There is this kind of uh, bridging influence what adventures can, can bring. Fundraise for some philanthropy projects is quite common nowadays to, to, uh, to promote some of these projects. Educational purpose, of course, kids and youth are the main, main uh, target group. Then source of inspiration for, many, for people uh, from many different fields really highly appreciated. I, I know that from my own experience, I have been giving talks uh, in very different places, uh, places where you sometimes think before you, you go to talk there that what the hell I'm going to tell them because um, you, you talk whether they understand it uh, at all, but it's, it's quite uh, inspiring for, for myself as well. Then it's a certainly entertainment part, which thanks to the Nowadays, uh, social media, all the technological advances is, is a very, very easy thing to carry out. And it's, it's one of the definite part of the adventures. Rise the public awareness about the environmental issues, which is one of the most important uh, thing nowadays, I think. And it has never been actually more important and urgent uh, to explore our, our world as the as the nature we depend is, is showing signs of severe stress, as we know, and, and uh, we need to understand how these life-supporting ecosystems work in order to preserve them. So adventures actually could uh, nicely collaborate in these, these advances and, and to, uh, to raise this awareness and, and uh, educate public about these issues. There are times when science and adventure meet and uh, my lifetime experience, what I count as a lifetime experience was, was taking place in, back in 2007 when I was drifting on this ship Tara at the left side of the, imi the image. And that, uh, that was um, why it was very special. It was because I, I uh, spent uh, several months lived on the sea ice, so that was my home at this time. And, and that unique experience uh, helped me a lot afterwards, uh, planning some of my own expeditions or adventures. And, and I still appreciate it as a, as a really unique experience uh, after all these years. On the right image there is a famous nonsense, bridge of nonsense trip. Hansen has been a great inspirational source of mine uh, for many years now. And, and actually this uh, drift of Tara was also called up uh, to replicate the Hansen drift after more than 100 years later and was dedicated actually for the IPU of the 4th, which, which uh, took place in 2007-2008 and served a huge uh, scientific platform called uh, Tamoclus, which was the huge scientific uh, EU project. So this expedition actually involved both of these. It was very adventurous. There, there wasn't uh, such a comforts what you normally find from, uh, from stations or icebreakers. So it, you still had to 
take care of yourself. There was no servicing staff or whatever like this. We were a team of uh, 10 persons, crew of 10. So we had to take care of ourselves and our own everyday life, all the routine work and also uh, carrying out quite a comprehensive uh, scientific measurement program. So science and adventure were really joined. Uh, no one really knew how the, how the ship uh, uh, will, will go to uh, stand against uh, a huge force of the ice, all this pressure. So that was completely unknown and never had been tested before in the ice. And, and that was quite an excitement. But after all, like Mallory, George Mallory used to say also that adventure is just a pure joy, what one, one can much appreciate. That, uh, leaving out all the other details, it is just uh, being in this flow, being on the road, and appreciate that movement itself. So there are st I think there are still things to explore, whether they are white patches inside the man himself or herself, or specific scientific issues. And common thing uh, then and now is that man still wants to go out and get these answers. So the curiosity still exists and, and will exist probably forever. And uh, yeah, both times have also proved that poor preparations can have a disastrous consequences on the field whether you are doing that in historical time or, or on in modern times. But um, nowadays climate change can actually flip uh, the historical endeavor when uh, everyone was, was uh, endeavoring to be the first one. So nowadays we perhaps can even chase the, the goal to be the last one to do something because the ice is melting and melting fast in the Arctic particularly. So I think the Jew spirit of exploration is not dead and here's the, quite a good proof for that. A little foxy from Spitsbergen uh, covered 3,500 kilometers distance in 76 days, ended up in Ellesmere Island. It's a very remarkable journey. No one knows what what was pushing that foxy to, to carry out something like this. So that's the next journey to repli replicate uh, for future explorers in the footsteps of the little foxy I entitled it. And actually the fox made something which have been circling in, in my and my good fellow Norwegian Odin uh, in our heads to carry out uh, the first uh, unsupported trip from Spitsbergen to Greenland, but it has a very, very lot of difficulties and, and uh, particularly the ice conditions which are very tricky there. But now we have a fox, a polar fox who has been proved it can be done. So we have nothing left but follow the footsteps of the foxy. Thank you.